Most Iron Maiden fans associate the band's rhythm section with nobody else but Nico Monbray. Welcome boys and girls, how are you? And this of course is no surprise since Nico has been with the band for almost 40 years now. Yeah, unbelievable. And yet before 1982, Steve Harris and the team had a rather long and extensive search for their permanent drummer, with each of the previous drummers joining the band contributing something of their own to the development of a trademark Iron Maiden sound. And so first of all, let's take a look at the brief history of Iron Maiden drummers, listen to some rare recordings of each and every one of those, and then find one song in the entire Iron Maiden discography which was separately recorded with each of those five, and compare their interpretations of that famous track. Here you go. By the way, by now you're most likely wondering what kind of awesome new jewelry Vlad has and that means that it's time for me to thank Gothic for sponsoring this video. Gothic specializes in making metal fans actually look like metal heads and have a vast variety of awesome jewelry designs for any kind of taste on their websites varying from anything Viking related to religious ornaments. And with the promo code METAL20 any metal head can get a 20% off and that means choose even more cool stuff which will make him or her look way cooler at the next metal show they go to. So yeah, whether you're looking for a super awesome gift or just to treat yourself, go ahead and check them out. I'll make sure to leave both the link and the promo code in the pinned comment. But alright, the thanks are over, let's do it! Upon the band's formation in 1975, Steve Harris invited his friend Ron Rebel Matthews to join him in his new project. Steve and I, we were the, of the same mind, we both had like a, a burning ambition. In fact, Rebel was the very first person Steve recruited for the project and therefore technically he is the very first founding member of Iron Maiden after Steve Harris. First gig I think there was eight people, on the second gig there was 28 and it went on from there. Together with Ron, Steve was finally able to play the songs he has written, which were deemed too technical and complicated for his previous project Smile. Went through several lineup changes including second their first vocalist Paul Day until they settled on somebody called Dennis Wilco. Uh, he used to do this little trick with uh, blood capsules and a sword and all that and all the blood for a very long time it was believed that there are no recordings of Iron Maiden with their first two drummers, yet this is not exactly true. Since in 1977 the three bits of the early incarnation of Iron Maiden songs were recorded together with Rebel on drums. <laughs> Iron Maiden, Ron Matthews has stayed throughout 1976 and parts of 1977 until he was sacked by the band's vocalist Dennis Wilk. He eventually managed to sack everybody, including me, Bob Sawyer, Dave Murray. We was all sacked. And I guess it's kind of ironic that in 1981, Ron Rebel Matthews actually reunited with Dennis, who fired him from Iron Maiden in his project called Gibraltar. After parting ways with Rebel, the band was left drummerless, and so they recorded a guy called Barry Perkis, now better known as Thunderstick, who actually has been pretty well known in the area. And then we tried uh, all various drummers and we ended up with Thundersticks. Barry, as he doesn't really want to be known. Yet despite his masterful playing skills, his career in Iron Maiden was actually the shortest out of all of the drummers, lasting only one show. That show happened to be in Bridge House in 1977, during which, according to Steve Harris, Barry would go on playing an obnoxiously long drum solo while insulting the audience. Oh, he's got to be a bit good now, he's got to get better now, and he just got worse. And it was like, he, he, dro he dropped something, I mean, he, you know. And I don't mean he stick. Yet luckily enough, there still is one recording available to us today with Barry Purgus on drums in Iron Maiden, this time of their rehearsal in 1977. <laughs> Perkis joined another legends of new wave of British heavy metal, Samson, and it is there where he got his nickname Thunderstick and developed his very recognizable stage presence. <laughs> In fact, in 1980, when Iron Maiden were touring together with Samson, he was actually asked to rejoin the band, yet declined in favor of Samson because at that point, believe it or not, they were actually slightly bigger than Iron Maiden and were very much associated with his ridiculous theatrical image. And 
just running a little bit ahead of myself, I actually think it's kind of ironic that Thunderstick's predecessor in Samson, Clive Burr, actually took the position of Iron Maiden and became one of the most legendary drummers the band has ever had. In 1978, Steve Harris reunited once again with Doug Samson, whom he had known from his previous project, Smiler. I knew he was a good drummer and a good bloke and all that, and um, he was out of a job with a band, so I just phoned him up and said, look, you want to come in with this? And he was like, he was mad up for it, you know. In fact, when Steve Harris formed Iron Maiden in December of 1975, Steve invited Samson to join with him, yet the drummer declined because he wanted to quit music whatsoever. Yet several months later, Doug picked up his drum and sticks once again and actually attended that last show with Thunderstorm on drums, after which he actually had a conversation with Steve Harris about joining Iron Maiden. I knew he was damn serious, and uh, well, so was I at the time, so it was uh, it made quite a good uh, companionship, like, you know. And it is with Doug Samson, with whom the band has had their very first ever professional recordings. Together with Doug Samson, Iron Maiden recorded the Soundhouse tapes, the famous demo from 1979, as well as the BBC archives, the four songs also recorded in the same year. <laughs> Iron Maiden were developing their own sound and gaining popularity all across the United Kingdom, their touring schedule and their four responsibilities, which were required by each of the band members, have increased drastically. And no matter what anyone says, but that life is not actually for everyone. And therefore, on the 22nd of December in 1979, Doug Sampson actually decides to leave Iron Maiden. I was living on a diet of junk food, alcohol and cigarettes, which was never going to be a recipe for good health. And it just told on me. And while the news that Doug broke to the band were rather unexpected for Steve and the team, they actually opened the door for new opportunities for Iron Maiden, who just got signed with EMI Records. As I said before, after Doug Samson left the band, Steve Harris approached Thunderstick once again, who was one of the most up-and-coming drummers in the area at that time, and asked him to join Iron Maiden once again. Yet, since Barry Perkins declined the offer, Iron Maiden were doomed to embark on a long and exhausting journey to find their next drummer which lasted four days. <laughs> On the 26th of December in 1979, Samson's ex-drummer Clive Burr joins Iron Maiden after his old-time friend Dennis Stratton suggested him for this position. And I bumped into Clive and I said, look, I'm, I've joined Maiden, uh, they're looking for a drummer, do you want to go, you know? <laughs> I didn't even learn them, you know, I just played along with them. And of course it is together with Burr that Iron Maiden released their debut record, their amazing follow-up Killers, and their breakthrough album Number of the Beast. As Iron Maiden started releasing their studio albums, their popularity started growing not only in the United Kingdom, but all across the world. And as we know, with recognition comes not only the popularity, but also responsibility, and a lot of times confrontation, and thus in December of 1982, Clive Burr was actually fired from Iron Maiden. It's all about life, so if we start not being able to perform at max out 150%, then things are going to change. Okay, and in order to be fair, I want to state that we don't 100% know what actually happened within the band at that time. Since according to Steve Harris, Clive's dismissal took place because of his poor live performances, which were vastly affected by his off-stage activities. We gave him three months to, to sort himself out. Um... And he didn't. Yet, according to Clive Burr himself, nothing like that has ever happened. And his departure from Iron Maiden was actually a result of creative differences between him and Steve Harris and the team. But no matter what the fact remains, Iron Maiden just parted ways with their fourth drummer and were about to end their seven year long search for a permanent drummer by hiring someone who will actually stick to the band ever since. The story with Nico McBrain's acceptance in Iron Maiden makes me believe that the guys hate auditions. No, seriously, every time since 1980 when they had to change a band member, whether it was Harry, Bruce Dickinson, Nick McBrain or Yannick Gers, they've always been very decisive and only had one candidate for the job actually, with the only acceptance of Blaze Bailey of course, but we've already covered that in our previous episode on the Up the Iron series. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thus this time, just like a year earlier with Bruce Dickinson, they've already known whom they wanted to be their next drummer. We're connecting with Nico throughout the years, you know, either this show this show you know 
the most natural person to, to have in the band. And together with Nick, our Iron Maiden were able to not only sustain the sound they've already developed by then, but also raise the complexity of their rhythm section to an absolutely new level. Just like with four previous drummers, I'm not gonna go into the biographical details of Nico McBrain's life, nor into the story of why and how did Iron Maiden decide to invite Nico to join their band. And we always got very well. I was very concerned about his influence within the band. <laughs> Yet, if you guys think that a special episode on each of those drummers would make sense for you guys on this series, please let me know in the comments. As well as whether we should expand our isolated parts series on drums as well. Write that down, write that down! But anyways, it is indisputable that together with Nico and partially because of him, Iron Maiden were able to achieve enormous level of popularity all across the globe and become one of the greatest heavy metal bands ever existed. <laughs> And in my personal opinion, that complexity only continued growing from an album to an album Iron Maiden released. So, who is the best drummer Iron Maiden has ever had in their 40 plus year long career? Well, even though for me personally, Iron Maiden's drum section has always been associated with Nico McBrain and Nico McBrain only, I think it's fair to point out that each of the five drummers Iron Maiden has ever had contributed a lot to the development of their trademark rhythm section. But, as I said, there is actually one song in Iron Maiden discography which was performed by each of those five at one point. And it actually also happens to be the only song for which Dave Murray receives Full writing credit. This is uh, so close, Charlotte the Arlo. So see on the middle fingers, come on. And even though this recording, of course, will not show us who is the best Iron Maiden drummer, still, let's take a look at how it has evolved throughout the years. <laughs> I don't know about you, but even though Charlotte Hart is definitely not one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs, I absolutely love hearing how it has developed since 1977 and all the way till today. But anyways, what do you guys personally think about Iron Maiden drummers? Whom do you personally consider the best drummer the band has ever had? Do you guys think we should dive deeper into the biography of each of those five or who they were before joining Iron Maiden in this series? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and keep rocking. Yeah.